All right, tonight we have Brother Paul Corlew who's going to be coming to speak uh, for us tonight. He's on our staff for uh, seven years here as our youth pastor, and uh, we've known him a little bit longer than that, and uh, I think he's great because he helped provide four grandkids for us. And uh, so you guys better be on your best behavior because your daddy be up here. And uh, listen to Grandma, too, or she'll spank you. No, I won't. And uh, in that, but uh, I do want to encourage you to do one thing for me. The uh, Christmas cards are all condensed now, and uh, please make sure that you go down and check for yours. And if not yours, then maybe you, somebody in your family, you could take them to them, or maybe uh, one of our shut-ins. Yeah, you can say, you know what, I'd be happy to take you know these cards to uh, this person and grab those cards up and make a visit this week uh, to them. So, but we need to kind of get those things condensed down so we can get them all taken care of before school starts up. Brother Paul. Provided grandchildren, so that's at least one good thing. I think if I was in jail, I, I'm the only one with Got them grandkids right now, so that's that's a positive thing. Um, I like this time of year. I like Christmas. I like today, where we can gather, celebrate the birth of Robert Salazar on December 26. <laughs> I would hate having Christmas birthdays. Logan's, yours was so close. You know, it's Christmas birthday. I mean, you should be overshadowed because it's Christ's birthday, but still, so close to Christmas. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize for your parents' poor planning. Uh, we uh, were able to get off for a couple weeks uh, vacation, so I got to go see my parents last week, and uh, so that was fun. Uh, I don't know what a normal sleep schedule is. We stay up late, play games, and it's just been a pretty wild. Even my brother, we, a one o'clock Taco Bell run used to be a good idea, and now it's just kind of like torture, but anyway, still did that. So it was a lot of fun hanging out, and then been here uh, in town. Uh, this week. So it's been a good time. Thank you, Pastor Salazar, for allowing me to preach and pray for him as he has knee surgery tomorrow. The hardest thing, he can't eat or drink after midnight until noon or after your surgery. So who knows? But All right. Well, tonight's message is entitled Time Machine. Okay. That car looked familiar to anybody in the room? What we got? I don't know who's back there, but I just saw a hand above the TV. Oh, and a head, Josh McNamara. There we go. Uh, how to change your future today. And so we're going to look into this uh, tonight. It won't be long. I already got a couple threats about people have to go to, go to bed, and those are probably the older people. You've got to be in bed by a certain time, so we'll make sure, sure you get out. Um, but we're going to look at this. If you want to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 11, we'll be there in just a minute. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we'll be there in just a moment. We'll read three verses in verse 26 through 28. For some of you can't wait. You can find it. Time travel. It seems like many people have been fascinated by this idea of time travel. It's been the fuel for countless movies, as we see on the screen. Back to the Future, one, two, three. Uh, or Bill and Ted's excellent adventure and Mr. Peabody was, was a good one as well but a, a lot of things go into these time travel movies but basically the premise is if we go back in time and we change a few choices okay in the past we can make the future better again and so that's what most of the time travel movies are about and so, I don't know if you could ever, if, if you've ever wished that you could turn back time. If you could turn back time, if you could find a way, you would take back those, no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure there's no share fans in here. I have a few small stories. These aren't big things. I'm not going to get heavy on you right now. But some things that you could change in your past. I remember, it was 1996, I was 12 years old. I was at SeaWorld with my family. Me and my cousin, I was hanging out with his family. I was with his family the whole time. And we had matching USA Dream Team Penny Hardaway jerseys and thought we were cool and all that. Well, we were at the Dolphin Show or whatever, and a lady with, a micro, with the microphone and the camera crew, they were going around asking questions in front of the audience. And then you're, you were up on the big screen and all that. And so they were asking me a question. I don't remember what it was, some Marine 
whatever. Well, as I'm trying to answer this question, I hear some laughing, some giggling, and I was really embarrassed. My cousin was behind me doing like the, the bunny ears, okay? I don't know why that's like a, oh, got you, you have bunny ears thing, but I was embarrassed and I was mad. And so right then I was on the, on the camera and, and I had uh, picked up a Coke and poured it all over him. And so it was a real great moment. And then to add to that day, my uncle got us kicked out of the whole park for something. But anyways, this is a really crazy day. Uh, I wish that it wouldn't have happened. Sometimes maybe it's small, like you're in the moment and you think, Maybe this isn't a good idea. I remember in the fall of 2006, I was talking to this girl named Crystal Salazar. And we were dating, and I called her dad and said, hey, I'd like to talk to you about, you know, asking you if I can marry your daughter or something like that. I don't know if you've ever nervous on the phone before, but it was one of those moments where you're like, Pace and okay, like I'm gonna make this call, gonna make this call, call, and then like hang up. Okay, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. And so, you know, finally made that call. And he said I could ask over the phone, but I just want to ask in person, make it official, whatever. Make at least one good impression, right? So I show up to the door of their house out 110 East Carolina. And I show up to the front door, and there he is with a shotgun. I'm like, in the moment, I'm not think, saying now I look back and say, man, I wish I wasn't there. No, in that moment, at that time, I'm thinking, oh, man, is this, is this a good idea? Is this, is this worth it? And then he was kind of joking at the time, and so that, that was good. But time where we wish, man, should I have done that, or would there be a better outcome? I remember here as a youth pastor, Pastor Mitchell, I'm sure you don't remember this. There's only a couple times that you've called me into your office. One time we were doing a game in Saturday Night Youth, and it was one of those bring me games, or like, uh, you know, bring me a penny from 1972, whatever. Doing this game, we are in the gym. For some reason, I'm like, sometimes things shouldn't come into my brain. I'm like, the first first people to jump into the baptistry and come back. And so we have like five kids running. This is Saturday night, you know, they're running in. And so my thinking was they would get in and run back. Well, no, people were jumping over into it, jumping out. And it was just a bad deal. And uh, yes, it was, Caitlin, you weren't there for that, were you? No? Okay, good. Well, anyways, it was one of those moments that I'm wondering, man, I wish I could have gone back in order that the future would have been uh, a little bit better out right there. Tonight's message is very simple. We can't change the past. You look at your own life, nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do. And so we don't have a crystal ball, okay, or or tarot cards to read the future, okay? But you can change your future today by making wise choices. You have the ability to change the future now instead of looking back and saying, wow, I wish I would have done something different. Today, you can try to use wisdom moving forward in your life. And so that's what today's message is all about. You can change your future today. They have a significant effect, good or bad, on our lives for tomorrow. And so using wisdom to change the future, that's what we're gonna talk about. Decisions I make today determine the direction I go tomorrow. That's very simple. That's very basic. We all understand that. What we do today affects our tomorrow. Driving here, we live in liberal Kansas, and that map is actually going up to northeast Ohio where my parents were. We drove that last Sunday, a week and a half ago. In order to get to Ohio, we have to drive what direction? Okay, east, right? We could still go west, okay? We could visit the Grand Canyon if we wanted. We could still eventually get to Ohio, but I wanted the quickest route, okay? I got four kids in a car. Like, I want to get there as fast as I can, right? And so the, the direction that I take affects where I'm going to end up and how long it's going to take for me to end up. We get that. We understand that when we're driving. Um, it's a tough time, time of year for me, uh, 
I'll say stepping on toes. I remember I used to be able to at least see my toes stepping on the scale. So I had to put a picture of someone else and their feet on the scale. This time of year with food, I mean, we're not talking about weight loss tonight or anything, but we, we get it in this context. What we do today with our bodies or put into our bodies affects who we are down the road, okay? For better or for worse. We understand that. The decisions we make today determine tomorrow. Students and grades. I, I remember being a student and thinking like the first f- five weeks, just like kind of cruising. And then I'm wondering, wait, how did I get to this point? <laughs> what you do at the beginning also uh, plays a part in the end of your grades. Finances. What you do with your money today affects what you can or can't do with your money tomorrow. So decisions you make today determine the direction that you go tomorrow. And so we're gonna look, we're gonna read a passage of scripture and have some quick application, very simple application into our lives about making wise choices. So Deuteronomy chapter 11, we'll start in verse 26, but I'm not gonna get deep into the history here, but just a little bit of context. Moses, he's standing here before the nation of Israel Uh, They're at the end of the 40 years of wandering across from the city of Jericho. They're on the verge of entering the promised land. So the children of Israel who were actually children, they're now adults, okay? And so uh, they're uh, about uh, to go in and the Lord reiterated through Moses uh, that he's going to promise like to bless the nation if they remain faithful. So Moses here, he's reiterating what God told them originally He's kind of given the second go around here. And so God has already said this, but here again, Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26, Bible says, behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. Okay, now the other option, verse 28, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. So Moses is again reminding them this very clear uh, instruction from God. If you follow God, okay, and you remain faithful, there will be blessings. And if you go your own way and do your own thing, there, there's no blessing, okay, there's a curse. And so he's simply stating, reminding them what's going on. And it seems very simple, but uh, especially maybe all of you who've had children before, you know, you can state it very plainly, okay? Do not touch this, okay? Or this will happen, okay? And And you can see their eyes wonder like, hmm, let's see if this is actually true. Touch, okay? But here, this, this is what most, he's being very clear again. There's no uh, blurred lines here. You follow the Lord and you remain faithful. There's going, there's going to be blessings. And so with this theme, the decisions you make today, they're gonna determine the direction you go tomorrow. And that's why it's a big deal to make the right choices. That's why it's a big deal to have wisdom in your life because you don't get do-overs. I mean, that'd be great. Maybe it was investments, okay? Uh, Man, I wish I could go back in time and and put money in in investments or Apple or whatever. I wish I could, like we can all look back at things in any kind of area in our life and think, yeah, I wish I could just do that. Life doesn't work that way, right? I, I remember playing video games. I remember being younger, like if I was losing a basketball game, I'm not gonna finish this. Turn it off, start over. Okay? If I can't beat the level, I'm just going to restart it. Uh, life is not that way. So personally, in your family finances, making the right choice in your spiritual life. So I'm not here to talk about your financial portfolio or whatever. Like We're going to talk about your spiritual life, which will influence a lot of other decisions. But real quick, how? How can I make wise choices? We're gonna answer this question very quickly and very shortly, very basic. I actually preached this message. This is a four week series that 
We just finished uh, in Kansas at the youth group, uh, the, the uh, youth pastor of the church. And the message, the series, uh, is really a series of warnings, uh, sexual purity, about relationships, uh, authority, a lot of different things uh, about making wise choices. No matter how old you are, the, the wisdom that we're seeing in just a minute, it's, it's a very simple application. So number one, making wise choices. Use the Bible as a filter for your decisions, for your thoughts, for the way you live life. Always, always ponder first, what does God say about it? Or what does God have for me in this context? And so I understand you may be thinking not every decision comes down to it, okay? Again, should I wear this blue shirt or this red shirt? Let me read my Bible and find out. But when you are in your Bible every day, okay, you, you, will, just ha- you, you will have God's wisdom. You may not even like feel this drastic change or whatever, but using the Bible as a filter in your life and having that spiritual walk, you will grow closer to God. You will have that wisdom uh, that you normally wouldn't have. And so... We have to filter everything through the lens of Scripture. First, the devil's always after us. The world is influencing us. And even our own flesh is kind of breaking us down and pushing us in a certain direction. So we have to use the Word of God to navigate. Psalms 119, verse 11 says, Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin. God's Word is going to help you make decisions. Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, okay? It's a light to my path. God's word will guide you. And so our guide can't be our own intuition. It can't be our own logic. It can't be our, even our own feelings, our own experiences. We have to be so careful when it comes to making the right choice and walking with the Lord. First, what does God say about this? Having that walk with, walk with God. And so this isn't anything mind-blowing tonight. <laughs> this is a rem- reminder that you as a Christian should be growing in your relationship with the Lord and your fellowship with God. No matter where you're at, no matter how strong you think you are, growing closer to the Lord. And so using the Bible as a filter, but also using godly counsel. Godly counsel, spiritual authority that God has placed in your life. You might have good friends that are there to influence you. You might have uh, good mentors in your life, and that's great. Uh, Pastor Salazar uh, is, is, is here at church. When making wise choices, seek God and his wisdom. Book of James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give it out. Liberally, he's going to give you wisdom. I mean, how often have we made a choice just on the spur of the moment or a whim and think, man, I I should have sought some counsel. I wish I would have taken some time. God says, hey, come to me. So we start there, but also use spiritual authority that God's placed in your life. Is that me? Can't tell. Anyways, using God's word and counsel. It's going to help you get the right perspective on issues in your life. Is that the speakers? Is it bothering you guys? Should I just take it off and talk? It's fine. No? If you guys can't hear it, that's fine. You guys are looking, I don't hear anything. Okay. Peter, do you hear something? You'll tell me the truth. Is it bothering you? Okay. Well, it just stops. So if it comes back on, I'm going to take it off. I appreciate you. So, Yes, sir. All right. (laughs) Uh, But also seeking your pastor, seeking wisdom uh, from spiritual authority. Again, it's it's not like, what should I have for lunch today? Don't bug your pastor with that, okay? (laughs) Don't bug your pastor about little things. But he wants to be involved in your life if you allow him to. And some of you might have issues and some things going on, might need prayer. Go to your pastor. Having the right perspective is going to help you making choices. We all get in this little box where we think we know everything. You probably have a friend, like they're going, they think they know, but like as an outsider, you're thinking, 
man, if you keep doing this, man, it, things are going to fall apart. They don't have any perspective. They're just kind of zoned in. <clears throat> There's a story about... Stay at the pulpit. There's a, a, a story about a, a, an older man who was uh, back in the day getting his car washed at the, at, at the gas station, getting his windshield wiped down and everything. And uh, the man told the, the young boy that was washing off, he said, hey, you missed a spot. So the boy came back over. He's rubbing it down. And uh, it's, that spot was still there. He says, hey, son, get over here. He looked at his wife. He's like, I can't believe this. He's Listen to how we did it when I, back in my day. And finally the boy rubs again. He's like, okay, I don't know. Well, then the wife finally hits him and says, hey, that spot's on your glasses. It's not on the windshield. It was blocking his own vision. It, like, it was right in front of him. And it took someone else to say, hey, you got something on your glasses. And sometimes in life we can get so focused in and zoned in and, and we just need some perspective from somebody else and some advice. And so... First off, go to God. Go to his word. But also, use godly counsel in your life. And so, tonight's message is very simple. And very short, because I'm done. But the challenge tonight, everybody's looking at the clock. Really? Yeah, really, I'm done. But in closing, in your life, we're going to 2019, okay? Again, we can all look back in whatever year of life you wish, hey, man, I wish this decision you know, I wish I would have done something different. Well, 2019, use wisdom, no matter how old you are, use wisdom in whatever area to where we'll put you in the right spot in the future. The decisions you make today determine the direction you go tomorrow. We all want to end up, like, again, this was designed for teenagers. You know, no teenager says down the road, like, I want my life to be ruined. You know, I want to be divorced a couple times, or I want my kids to hate me, you know, all this stuff. Like, but then they make decisions like today that aren't going to put them in a good spot. I know many of you aren't teenagers, okay? But that's the same for us. Nobody wants to look back and say, man, I wish I had a better, or like, I wish uh, my kids wouldn't talk to me or whatever. Like, you want the right things, but so often we, we're not making the right choices today or the wise choices today. So my challenge to you tonight, as basic as it seems, we can get so caught up in thinking, I know what I'm doing. I'm good. I've been going to church for a while. I've been saved. I've read my Bible one time throughout the year, a couple years ago. Like, Satan's ready to use that. Say, like, you need to stay sharp. You need to stay grounded in God's word constantly, daily. So that's my challenge to you. No matter how faithful you are or if you just started coming back to church or how old, you might be old, you might be young. 2019, get in God's word. Use godly counsel in your life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We're going to pray. We can all look back and look at regret and see what decisions we wish we would have made. But let's pray now just for a moment. And we'll just have one verse of invitation, if that's all right. We're just going to sing one verse. But in this short verse, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to pray purposely. Pray to God and just say, God, 2019. I want to walk in wisdom, and I want to walk with you. And so we're just going to do one verse, and that's it, of I surrender all. So right now, I'm going to, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to give you a moment to pray as well. So just stay seated while you're at. I'm going to pray. While I pray, why don't you ask God that 2019, that you can walk with him and have wisdom in your life. God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for uh, this Christmas season. Uh, and the joy of just the holidays for many. Uh, but God, even though some are struggling around Christmas time, God, I pray that no matter who, where anybody is in this room, that they, they would ask you, they would seek you, they would grow closer to you in 2019. So give them the courage to walk with you, the courage to be faithful, to be bold, whether that's sharing their faith, whether that's just showing up to church. And so God, let them be a light to this world. 
and let them walk with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.